The era of commercial computers began in 1951 with the Univac 1 machine. The machine was built from 6,000 electronic tubes, weighed 8 tons, consumed 125 kilowatts of electricity, and performed 1,900 operations per second. A total of 46 units were sold, with prices ranging from $160,000 to $1.5 million. The era of personal computers started in 1981 with the IBM PC 5150. Although it was not the first similar computer, it became very popular. It used the Intel 8088 processor. The transistor size was about 3,000 nanometers. It could execute 330,000 instructions per second. The system board weighed 11.5 kilograms. It consumed between 50 and 70 watts of power and cost between $1,500 and $3,000. The base configuration included 16 kilobytes of RAM. In 2004, thanks to the Apple Mac Mini G4, the mini computer era began. The PowerPC G4 processor used 180 nanometers transistors. The processor's performance was up to 2.4 billion instructions per second. The computer weighed about 1.5 kilograms, consumed between 35 and 80 watts, and cost about $500. The base configuration included 256 megabytes of RAM and an 80 gigabyte storage device. 20 years later, I have a modern mini computer, the Minisforum X1 Pro, on my desk. It's built around an AMD Ryzen 9 AI HX370 processor with 4 nanometers transistors. The processor has 12 cores and 24 threads. The mini computer can accommodate up to 12 terabytes of storage. The maximum RAM capacity can be up to 128 gigabytes. It has an efficient cooling system, a fingerprint scanner, a button to summon the personal assistant co-pilot, and a fast Oculink port for connecting external graphics cards, as well as a powerful integrated graphics adapter. The highlight of the processor used here is the AI accelerator. In the base configuration, it has 64 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 TB NVMe drive, and this basic bundle costs under $1,000. The computer itself weighs 1.6 kilograms and consumes between 7 and 100 watts. In 2024, AMD released the Ryzen AI 300 series. The distinctive feature of this series is that it uses both high-performance Zen 5 cores and energy-efficient Zen 5C cores. These processors are aimed at laptop use. The default TDP is 28 watts, but it can be adjusted from 15 to 54 watts. It also uses RDNA 3.5 graphics cores. The entire series employs an AI accelerator with a performance of 50 tops. In 2025, AMD began releasing the Ryzen AI Mac series, which uses only high-performance Zen 5 cores. These processors are also aimed at laptops. The default TDP is 55 watts, but it can be tuned from 45 to 120 watts. The graphics cores are also based on RDNA 3.5, but the number of compute blocks is higher than in the Ryzen AI 300 series. It uses the same AI accelerator, the XDNA2. If in 2025 you ask the question, why do processors have an AI accelerator? I reply that mobile phones have used AI accelerators since 2015, mainly for tasks such as facial recognition and image enhancement. But by 2025 AI is also used in computer software. For example, Adobe Premiere 2025 has a built-in AI module. It can be used for adding frames, translating subtitles, adding ambient sounds, searching video frames by description, and other purposes. The processor itself is built with a 4 nanometers process. Of its 12 cores, only 4 are high-performance Zen 5 cores. Their base frequency is 2 GHz, but they can boost up to 5.1 GHz. The other eight cores are energy-efficient Zen 5C cores, also with a base frequency of 2 GHz and a maximum boost of 3.3 GHz. It includes an integrated graphics module based on RDNA 3.5 with eight compute groups, which equals 16 compute units. The processor can drive up to four monitors and supports a maximum resolution of 8K at 60 Hz. It has a codec encoding and decoding module for popular video codecs such as H.264, H.265, and AV1. The AI accelerator delivers up to 50 tops. The processor supports DDR5600 RAM or soldered LPDDR8000. It can address up to 256 gigabytes of memory. Minisforum X1 Pro measures 195 by 195 by 47 millimeters. 
A fingerprint scanner is mounted on top, and it responds quickly. The mini computer can be positioned horizontally or vertically on the desk. The package includes a stand and visa mounting hardware so it can be secured to a monitor. On the front panel, there is a power button and a co-pilot summon button, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports at 10 gigabits per second, and a Type-C port with the USB 4 protocol supporting data rates up to 40 gigabits per second. The same port can also transmit audio and video via an alternate display port. It also features an integrated 15 watts power delivery. Two side recesses are built-in microphones, and an SD card reader is on the side. The rear panel includes a CMOS reset button and a Kensington lock slot. USB-A ports run at USB 2.0. The Type-C port also supports USB 4 with data rates up to 40 gigabits per second, and it includes an integrated Alt-DP and 15 watts power delivery. The Oculink connector accepts four PCI Express 4.0 lanes. This port can be used for high-speed connection to external graphics adapters or storage devices. Mini's forum also offers a docking station for external GPUs. Similar docks are inexpensive, about $100, but typically they do not include a power supply, so you will need to buy one separately. Note that Oculink does not support hot plugging. You must first disconnect power from the mini computer before connecting the Oculink cable. There are two monitor outputs, DP 2.0 and HDMI 2.1, with a maximum resolution of 8K at 60 Hz. However, I found something odd. The manufacturer's website lists 4K 120 Hz, while the processor supports 4K 240 Hz in SDR and HDR and Full HD at 600 Hz. The processor's integrated graphics also support Miracast wireless video transmission. It has image enhancement algorithms and supports many encoding and decoding options. Two Ethernet ports at 2.5 gigabits per second each and a power input. And another feature of this mini PC is an integrated power supply. Inside the mini computer, there are two fans, a large one for cooling the processor, a small one for cooling the power supply block. The fans are quiet, so even under heavy load, they will not disturb you. The power supply has a power rating of 135 watts and outputs a voltage of 19 volts. There are two built-in speakers at 2 watts each. And both the speakers and the microphone here are primarily for communicating with the Copilot Assistant. For installing NVMe drives, there are three slots, but the first two connectors fit four PCI Express 4.0 lines each. That is, the maximum theoretical speed can reach up to 8 gigabytes per second. The first two drives can be combined into a RAID Array RAID 0 or RAID 1, and only one line of PCI Express 4.0 fits the third connector. In the kit that comes with the mini PC may go not high radiators for NVMe drives. High radiators do not become because the power supply blocks. As a Wi-Fi module MediaTek MT7925B22M is used. It works at frequencies of 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz. It supports Wi-Fi 7 and the maximum data transfer speed reaches 2.4 gigabits per second, and it has Bluetooth version 5.3. The operating memory uses crucial DDR5-5600. Two modules of 32 gigabytes total 64 gigabytes. But at most, this mini computer supports 128 gigabytes of operating memory. From the processor to the radiator run two heat pipes. I did not take it apart further because the cooling system here is made well and it fully handles serious load. To enter the BIOS at startup, hold down the Dell key. There are not many settings. You can choose the selected mode of operation, balanced or productive. Make a RAID array from your own drives. On Type-C ports, you can disable power delivery, disable LEDs on Ethernet connectors. The fan mode can also be chosen balanced or productive. In AMD CBS, there are some settings for the processor. You can turn off Turbo Boost. In the graphics adapter settings, the amount of operating memory can be selected from 1 GB to 48 GB. Base sound can be completely turned off. And quite typical is that a mini PC has settings when restoring power. In SMU common options, you can limit the processor consumption from 15 to 54 watts. All tests I will do at maximum consumption. And immediately about the consumption of this computer in different modes of operation. For measuring consumption, I used a smart socket. In idle mode, this mini PC consumes about 10 watts. 
If you play games on it, then it consumes about 70 to 80 watts. And when performing various tests, the consumption rose to 100 watts. Regarding data transfer speed, unfortunately, my router supports only Wi-Fi 6. And the built-in adapter showed a speed of about 1 gigabit per second, while Ethernet adapters showed a speed close to 2.5 gigabits per second. The Kingston NVMe drive achieved a speed of about 7 gigabytes per second. CPU-Z, when testing the processor, gave 9,300 units. Cinebench 2024, in a single-core test, showed 119 units. In a multi-core test, it showed 1229 units. Passmark intended 39,000 CPU mark. To compare this processor with others, you can use the CPU benchmark site. And here it says 35,000 CPU marks. For comparison, I added 6600H. That is the computer on which I work. 18,000 CPU marks and also a processor of the Strix Halo AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 series. And this processor shows 53,000 CPU marks. The operating memory showed a speed of about 82 gigabytes per second. Winfo saw that here performance and energy efficient cores are used. I remind you that here there are four performance cores, eight energy efficient ones. The built-in audio on this mini PC is from Realtek. Unfortunately, there were some driver issues with it. The default driver from Minis Forum did not work correctly and the sound would cut out during games. So another driver had to be found. My test stress run lasted 10 minutes. The temperature never rose above 87 degrees Celsius. The CPU frequency was 4.5 gigahertz and power consumption was about 65 watts. The cooling system handled the load without issues. Geekbench 6 gave 15,000 points in the multi-threaded test and the built-in AMD Radeon 890M graphics adapter scored 36,000 OpenCL points and 42,000 Vulkan points. 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite yielded 22 FPS and scored 3,039 points. The built-in Radeon 890M was the fastest integrated graphics in 2024, with performance roughly equivalent to a GeForce GTX 1650. Thus, a 2023-2024 game library should run fine on this machine. For 4K at maximum settings, you would need an external GPU and an Oculink adapter. You give us three minutes and we give you the world. For testing, I used World of Tanks with the HD client. In a separate test, I used a different computer with a Radeon 780M GPU, allowing a comparison. At ultra settings, the Radeon 890M produced 5060 FPS, while the Radeon 780M produced 4050 FPS. At high settings, the Radeon 890M yielded 100-120 FPS, whereas the older GPU delivered 9100 FPS. At minimal settings, the Radeon 890M reached about 220 FPS, and the Radeon 780M reached 180-190 FPS. You can experiment with the AI accelerator using a Muse 3.1, which can employ various models to generate images. Using a ready prompt from the AMD site, I attempted to create a stylized bank. The results indicate that some cloud services handle this better, but Amuse is free and allows unlimited generation. Using the DreamShaper XL model, I tried to generate a girl with a preset prompt, and the result was roughly as shown. The Kmec image was created with a different model, and the result was about the same. When generating a cat at maximum quality, the graphics adapter was fully engaged. The quality was maximum, and 2728 gigabytes of RAM were used. The neural processor was not under load. The same cat generated with the AI accelerator used only about 8 gigabytes of RAM. The presence of a neural accelerator adds performance when using AI on laptops with limited memory. As AI continues to evolve, we observe exponential growth and specialization of workloads related to AI, driving the need for new computing architectures. Traditional architectures are now being refined for better AI application support. 
AI is increasingly penetrating all forms of computation, and graphics processors excel with AI due to their parallel compute power. But as AI demands rise, neural processors emerge. Working together, neural processors and GPUs optimize performance and energy consumption. I also experimented Yo, with Copilot, which now uses the ChatGPT5 model and partially supports neural processors. The question is, does Windows 11 use the neural processor when working with Copilot? In AI development and use such as Copilot various hardware is employed, including the CPU, GPU, or specialized NPU, depending on the task and configuration. This concludes the video. Technologies are now reaching a point where integrated graphics can be compared with discrete GPUs in terms of performance, and the use of AI accelerators further expands modern processors' capabilities.